Hi, everybody. Welcome to Mark's Backyard Birds. Going to try on something a little different tonight. Uh, this is the first time I've ever done straight live via YouTube. A lot of times my uh, programs are recorded and, uh, and brought in uh, on YouTube. But this time we're going to do an experiment with this live broadcast. And you're welcome to ask questions if you want to. Uh, to uh, the name of the program is November Wild Bird Happenings. And uh, last month I had done a post about, I did a, about, October and the things going on in the wild bird world. And tonight we're talking about what's going on in November because November is truly one of the most exciting uh, bird months that for those of us who love birds and those who love uh, to feed birds, November is when it starts to happen. We, you know, we, we've always said that the, the unofficial or the official, whichever way you look at it, uh, a start to the bird feeding season um, is around mid-November. And, and remember, I am in Kansas City, Missouri, so I'm in the middle of the country and wherever you are, because I know there's, I have folks who watch this from uh, all around the, the country and some even in the world. Uh, but whenever I talk about dates and what's going on, remember, in the bird world, if you live north of here, yeah, I may be a little behind you. Things that may have already happened that I'm talking about. And if you live south of here, then it, it, it may be delayed a week or two, just because that's how, how especially migration works. So what is happening in November? Well, okay. Uh, it, it, it is a huge transition month. And right now, tonight, we have forecast a huge cold front to come pushing through here um, in the in the middle of the country. So, you know, we are, let me get this up here. Me in the corner. Uh, a classic uh, fall scene. When I, when I talked about October, we talked about the, the shortening of day length it gets people, uh, gets birds in the mood uh, and the, the knowledge to know there's time for them to migrate because they know that weather is about to change. So uh, it, it's a time of natural uh, food sources really coming in. So the, our, our bird feeders are quite slow um, in late September and pretty much the whole month of October because the birds are taking advantage of wild food sources. Now, they are, hi, hi Connecticut. Uh, oh, hummingbird and California. Oh, hi, get, the people are chiming in. So good to see you. Thanks for tuning in. Yeah, they, the, so right now we're getting into this early. We, for us in Kansas City, we're having some real pretty early freezing going on, hard freezing and freezing and thawing um, is it's you know it, it forces berries to ripen quicker and dry up quicker. In seed heads, uh, the freezing and thawing calls those seeds to fall to the ground quicker. And so whenever there that's going on, that's when birds you start to look at bird feeders and start coming into bird feeders. And the added stress of really cold temperatures are going to force the birds in. So right so far, at, at least in my backyard and a lot of my customers' backyards, it's been fairly slow with the bird feeders. Um, it, it, the goldfinches have come back in in, in, in decent numbers and, uh, and the chickadees, titmice, our local birds. But we're now seeing that influx of uh, birds like, why aren't you loading? Uh, my picture won't come up. So, sorry, keep trying to get that picture to load, but it won't. But juncos uh, are, are really starting to show the white throated sparrows, things like that. Uh, birds that have been to the north and nested to the north are really starting to show up at feeders. But up north, what is happening is this we are in in the far north in canada and even minnesota and the north tier states are already getting some early snow and they are really getting ground cover and this is what happens in, in november that really drives bird feeders and and bird populations here in the midwest uh during the winter months early early hard freezes early snow push birds faster. So obviously if you're a bird that depends on water, like a great blue heron, 
you can't, you won't see this scene in winter, you know, because the, the ponds begin to freeze over. And so great blue herons are a great example of a bird that will only go as far south as it has to, where it can uh, maintain or find open water. Hello, Ohio. Um, and Kansas. All right. So we're getting people in from all over. That's good. Somebody wants to know what Peter's best for Junkos. All right, we're going to answer uh, about Junkos here in just a second. Yes, yeah, because that that's a, a big part of the topic. And my picture for Junko is about two pictures away, so I'm going to get there really quickly. But um, uh, so uh, uh, in migration and fall migration, this the, the, the you only want to go as far as you have to because migration is a very dangerous thing. But in the far north, when it starts to look like this, one of the main birds that are affected by it are waterfowl. Now this this is about a million snow geese, right? And, and this is taken here in Northern Missouri in the winter months. Uh, we have a giant population of, of snow geese that will winter down here. We get, they get funneled down by the, from the Mississippi River Flyway and the Central Flyway down into our part of the world. And this is a huge amount of it. But where they live and where they breed uh, in the summer months, of course, is going to be completely hard frozen over. So for them to find open water is the key for their survival in winter. The other uh, type birds that are affected by this type of scene are just like you're asking, uh, juncos and, and, and the songbirds. And yes, what the whenever we talk about feeding in the winter months, there's a lot of different foods and there's lots of different ways to feed birds. But one of the ways that gets forgotten about feeding birds is the ground. The ground is a great bird feeder, and juncos in particular are a bird, just like a lot of the native sparrows and even cardinals. They like to feed on the ground. They feel safe down there. So if you want to attract drunk juncos, I, what I do is I just throw a scoop of millet or what I have in my mixture called ground throw, which has a little bit of sunflower, a little bit of safflower in it. But I make sure I throw a good scoop of that on the ground, especially near the edges of bushes, because juncos and other ground feeding birds feel safer when they're up against cover and near cover so they can fly up into the bush if a cooper's hawk or uh, a house cat or something comes creeping into the yard, then they can fly up in there and feel safe. But the little dark eyed junco, um, and there are different subspecies all over the United States, but the juncos are classic signs of winter you know their nickname are snowbirds because they uh they do come down here in the winter and we may not think of missouri as a great uh winter vacation spot i mean you know we in here we most of our snowbirds go to texas or arizona or even florida but for birds instead of going that far north they just want to go just far enough that they know they're going to have open ground they're going to open that so they can pick up the seeds that are falling to the ground. And bird feeders, of course, are huge opportunities for them because we do get snow here in, you know, in the Midwest. Um, that usually doesn't last as long as it does up further north. But it, it they a lot of the birds only make it this far uh, when they're in migration. So a lot of the birds that you're wanting to feed will be there. Now, another uh, bird that we get a lot of questions about and what do they eat in the winter and uh, are, are robins. You know, robins, the uh, robins think uh, are, are fruit eating birds mainly uh, in the winter months. And you know, classically, everybody thinks, oh, the robins all leave here. No, robins are thrushes. And as long as they can find soft mass fruit, they will stay here all winter. And some winters, they stay here in really good numbers with the cedar waxwings and eastern bluebirds, another are, are, are classic uh, fruit eating birds. And so this year, we had a pretty dry summer in our part of the country. So wherever you are, kind of think about what your what your moisture type was like all, all for summer because that moisture is what allows trees and shrubs to produce fruit. And if you had a really dry summer, you may not have a lot of fruit in your area. So you may not have a lot of robins this winter, a lot of bluebirds or cedar wacklings. I don't think we're going to have a huge uh, uh, batch of robins in our area, dish, but we always have some. I like to tell the story about bird watching one of my first winters here in Missouri. And we were in a, a real wooded area uh, along a trail and it looked like the forest floor was boiling. And it was like, what in the world? And it was just leaves were just popping up and down. And, all of a sudden, we kept we saw these robins' heads popping up out of the leaves and going back under, and it, so they were rooting around in the leaf litter 
getting you know, wintering insects and wintering worms down there underneath the leaf litter and pushing and popping them up. And so they'll eat that, they, you know, they'll feed that way also. Uh, but mainly fruit is what they depend on uh, during the winter months. So they may be this winter, they may get pushed a little further South. They're, they're expecting a lot of snow here and not, and we had a pretty dry summer. So that combination may cause robins and bluebirds to go f uh, further South than the normal. So it depends where you're at. Uh, a, a, Two birds that a lot of people don't think about migrating, um, but they do, are the red-headed woodpecker and the blue jay. Both of these birds are oak-dependent species, and they mainly uh, store and eat acorns during the winter months. So a lot of these birds will get pushed down out of the northern states and, and, and even Canada in the winter months in search of areas that have good acorn crops. And again, depending upon the moisture level and what happened in, in your woods, uh, you may have a huge acorn crop this year. And so you may have a good batch of red-headed woodpeckers or, or blue jays uh, that settle in into your area and be there all winter. If you're scarce on, on acorns, they have to may, may move along. You, and you may be asking yourself a little bit later in the winter, where are all the blue jays? Well, they may have had to have moved with that where they could find more acorns. Now, both of them like to store their, their food uh, blue, hey, red-headed woodpeckers in particular, I've seen them, uh, they, they like ear corn. So they'll, I've seen them go down, come down, grab a, a kernel of off an ear of corn, fly up and stuff it into a hole in a tree and go back and forth and back and forth. Do the same thing with peanuts and they'll get a store of those, uh, that food up in the winter months for the, for the, uh, harsher parts of winter. Blue jays will bury their acorns and peanuts and in shell peanuts are a favorite of theirs. I don't like to put out too many in shell peanuts for blue jays. I like to lay a handful or so in my tray there uh, because they'll eat a couple and then they'll go out and start burying them in your yard. I've watched them hop around the yard with a peanut in their bill, stick it in the grass, grab a leaf and pull the leaf and put it on top of the peanut. So they, they like to do that. So there, there are two classic birds that, you know, maybe you don't think as much about migrating, but they, you know, we can have big pushes of those in the winter because of their dependable food sources. And another bird, another group of birds that does mig do migrate uh, uh, and get pushed by severe weather, especially, are raptors, birds of prey. This is a red-tailed hawk, and I don't know how well you can see it, but he has a mouse uh, in his beak there. And these birds get pushed down, um, and again, because of snow cover, it's much easier for you to catch a mouse if you're a hawk or a rabbit if there's not snow cover on the ground, and uh, the mice will burrow or are burrowing under the snow. Where, and so they get pushed and they only go as far south and they gradually push down through winter. Um, in our area, right here through the Kansas City area, we usually have our highest population number of hawks along the highways in December. Uh, and then our lowest numbers of hawks are usually like in February because they've been pushed even further south um, during the winter months. So this is November is this month. This is when a lot of this is happening. We got, we got a lot of stuff going on up north. And that's affecting our populations down here. This is when you really want to get your bird feeder stations ready. You want to get them cleaned up, filled up, um, and break out those uh, heated bird baths. That's the, I, I'll say it many times, but I say it almost every video I do. Unfrozen water is probably the single best thing you can provide for birds, even better than food. Um, they, you know, more birds die of dehydration uh, in winter than usually starvation because they can find food. They can make their own body heat like, like we can, but they've got to be able to have that unfrozen water to help them and to help them survive that, those really harsh periods of time. I've got two questions. One says, I can't feed on the ground because I have raccoons. Uh, One says, I use sunflower seed. Is that good, right? Absolutely. A couple of questions there. Absolutely. Uh, black hole sunflower is the single best seed you can feed for birds. If you want to keep it super simple for feeding birds and you only want to buy one kind of seed that'll appeal to the, the masses, to the greatest number of birds, black hole sunflower is the single best seed there is. And it's still, even the price is as high as they are right now, it's still a great value compared to uh, a lot of seeds. And so, yes, black hole sunflower is a wonderful um, it, it choice. Uh, question about raccoons. Yes, <laughs> uh, raccoons can be quite a challenge. Um, the I can't recommend highly enough raccoon baffles on your poles. Raccoon baffles, I call them stove pipes. They're a longer uh, skinny baffle that fits over a pole that prevents the raccoons from being able to climb them. 
some people use PVC pipe, a big piece of like six inch to keep them from being able to climb the poles. It has to be suspended on the pole. Uh, the, a lot of the hot seeds, like Wild Delight has uh, sizzle and heat now, uh, which is a pre-treated uh, uh, seed with habanero oil uh, in it. And it's very, very effective against squirrels and raccoons. Now, it's not going to be 100% effective. I've had you know, people say, oh, you know, my squirrels and raccoons look must like really spicy food because I ate it. But I can tell you, I sell a lot of that spicy food um, uh, and, and it works for a lot of people. And also they have, um, we also have the oil that you can mix into this, your favorite seed mix and put that out. It's called flaming squirrel. And it's, it's just a couple of capfuls for five pounds of seed and you, you know, like shake and bake. You mix it in there and don't get it on your hands, but you, know, you can put it out. It doesn't hurt the birds. Birds taste bud system is completely different from mammals. So Mammals hate it, birds don't mind it, and it's very, very effective. But yeah, keep an, if you can suspend bird feeders from under the eave of your house, another very effective way against raccoons, especially if you suspend it, you, you hang it in front of a, a picture window. I do that with one of my, my biggest finch feeder. I hang it right in front of a family room window. Never have squirrels or raccoons in it. So that's it, it's another effective way to keep those pesky animals out of your, your bird feeders. All right, what else we have here? A waste-free seed. Yeah, somebody asking about waste-free seed. Yes, I love my waste-free seed. Uh, my favorite is, um, for, for my finches, is just fine sunflower chips, which are, you know, the sunflower kernels or sunflower hearts is, is the de-hulled or hulled um, sunflower seed. And there's no waste, no germination. But the fine, the, the chopped up small and the medium, those are my two favorite for feeding my uh, my finches and my bluebirds. My bluebirds love the hull of sunflower seed. And so that's my favorite. Now I also have a, a mix that I love uh, called Mark's Backyard Blend, a, a no waste blend, which is of course my blend that I came up with, which is a mixture of uh, a couple of different sizes of hull of sunflower, a couple of different sizes of peanuts, some real fine uh, peanut pieces um, and some mixed nuts in it. So none of that has hulls. None of it has uh germination. So it's very clean, very good seed. Um, Wild Delight has a great seed called Deck Porch and Patio, which again is another whole, uh, completely whole of seed. So they're wonderful. They cost a little more, but their price per pound actually works out better if you think about it, because in a, in a regular bag of bird seed, you're paying for all those hulls, like black hole sunflower. There's about 60% hulls in a bag, whereas a, a hullless mix is 100% food. So that's something to consider there. So... Uh, let's see. Any other questions here? You're good. Good. All right. Excellent. Well, thank you all so much for joining in tonight. Um, we'll do this. I'm going to try to do at least one of these every month about what's happening. So obviously we'll, the next one, we'll, we'll do one in December about what the December happenings at your backyard and your bird feeding. But then of course I, I, I I'll be adding videos as they, it, as I can do them. Uh, I got one coming up on bird bills and, and, and beaks. So bird bills. So we're going to be talking about that here pretty soon. So I look forward to getting that one up online and thank you. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. Um, that helps us out. Give us a like, give us a share, you know, let people know we're out there. And we thank you so much for, for tuning in. And until next time, Mark's Backyard Birds this is Mark. Have a good night. It ends up being 18 minutes.